We're in week three of our eight-week series on the five agreements. Each week is independent. All of the weeks are going to be out on our website and on the YouTube channel and our Facebook page. In this series, we're learning to break the dysfunctional agreements that we made with ourselves when we were growing up and adopt a new set of beliefs that allows us to live from a place which reflects love for ourselves and for others. And this week, we're talking about the second agreement, don't take anything personally. Each week I ask you, are you willing to examine what you believe? We've already looked at the first agreement, which is be impeccable with your word. And today we're looking at not taking things personally, which basically means learning to take everything at face value and recognizing that when people share what they think, it's their truth, not necessarily our own. Not only that, nothing, and I mean not a thing, that other people do is because of us. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality. And when you're immune to the opinions and actions of others, you can avoid being a victim of suffering. And who wants to suffer anyway, right? So our series question about are you willing to examine what you believe is really important if we're going to overcome some of these beliefs. The question for the week is this, what is the one choice that you can make today to not take anything personally? Knowing that you are the best person on this planet to be you and choosing freedom, truth, creativity, joy, ease, and grace in all you do. One more time. What is the one choice that you can make today to not take anything personally? Knowing that you are the best person on the planet to be you and choosing freedom, truth, creativity, joy, ease, and grace in all you do. So just for a few minutes, let's take a look at what it means to not take things personally. Take a breath and think about something that you do better than anybody else you know. We all have a little part of us that knows that we do something great. How many of you actually answered, being me? That's right. No one can be a better you than you can be. I'd like you to remember that the whole time that I'm talking about this second agreement. When people share what they think, it's their truth. They're entitled to their truth, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to adopt it. Ruiz says that when we accept the words of other people as the truth about who we are, that there's somewhere within us that we agree with what's being said. Now, somewhere within you, you're taking their truth as they know the truth of the entire world. Remember, nobody can be a better you than you. And no one else can know better than you know yourself those things that you want to be able to do. Another person's statements are their truths, not yours. Ruiz calls taking things personally as the height of selfishness. Now, it is the height of selfishness because it makes the world about me. Think about that for a minute. If you take things personally, you are really saying that the world revolves around you and everything that somebody else says is about you. Ralph Waldo Treen, in In Tune with the Infinite, says this about selfishness. When we fully realize the fact that selfishness is at the root of all error, sin, and crime, and that ignorance is the basis of all selfishness, with what clarity we come to look on the acts of all. 
It is the ignorant man who seeks his own ends at the expense of the greater whole. It's the ignorant man, therefore, who is the selfish man. The truly wise man is never selfish. He is a seer and recognizes the fact that he, a single member of the one great body, is benefited in just the degree that the entire body is benefited. And so he seeks nothing for himself that he would not equally seek for all mankind. What if you truly accept it, that nothing other people do is because of you? That really is the truth. We come to this world to be who we are, to define our own purpose, to live our own life, to make our own choices, and to speak about our own reality, how we see things. And we have free will. We do have choice. We can choose to allow others' opinions to impact us, or we can realize that their opinions come from their own set of values and their own view of the world. And from the, those agreements that they have made in the same way that ours come from the agreements that we've already accepted. Just for a minute, picture yourself standing next to your best friend and looking out into a beautiful landscape. Even though you're standing side by side, your view is not identical. Even if you and your friend are exactly the same height, your view is slightly shifted from theirs. And if you did a 360 degree view, they would be blocking part of your view just as you would be blocking part of theirs. The same is true of the truth of what we know the world to be. No two people's view of the world is exactly the same. And that's fabulous. It makes us who we are. It makes us unique. So when someone says to you something that seems hurtful or unkind, what choices do you have? Well, we can do what a lot of people do, and that's react, either by getting defensive or by giving them our own opinion, trying to make certain that the other person understands our beliefs and our point of view, explaining that we're right and they're wrong. Hey, I've gone there before. If you're like me, we want to explain when we hear something that sounds personal, like, wow, you look like something the cat drug in. Or, are you really saying that? In my opinion, the best choice is to realize at that moment that they're telling God, in the form of you, their message. Now, do you really think that the divine, at any level and at any time, would believe anything less than greatness, anything less than unconditionally loving remarks? I don't. And yet, it's so easy for us to take things personally, isn't it? To believe the things that we allow to hurt us, what if we just remember the words of our song today? I'm here to remind myself of my magnificence, to wake up to all the wonders that I am. It doesn't say we're here to listen to other people's bad comments about us or their opinions about us that we may not like. Remember, you create your own life. You direct your own life through your own beliefs, producing it by your actions and your reactions. And you're the star of the movie. The others in the movie are there just as supporting actors. And the roles they play are the ones that you give them because you're the director. So why give them a role in which you feel less than in any area of your life? Why give them a role in which you're not the star? Direct your movie so that the camera stays focused on who you are. 
1958, our founding father, Ernest Holmes, wrote the practical application of the science of mind. And he said this about our choices in that book. The power of choice with which man has been endowed is either his greatest blessing or his greatest curse. Properly understood, it can lift him to the heights. Misunderstood, it can drag him to the depths. He is free to choose anything which he wishes, but he must accept the responsibility for his choices because inexorable law will create his experience according to his choices. Think about that for a minute. You create your experience according to your choices, according to how you direct your movie of your life. I talk a lot about the power of our thoughts and how our thoughts manifest. Our meditation today was about our thoughts being prayers and we're always praying. When our thoughts are ones of anger, we produce anger. And when our thoughts are of love, we produce love. Essentially, our thoughts are what has us taking things personally. In the Science of Mind Dictionary of Terms, Holm tells us that our thoughts are tools. And he writes this, different kinds of thoughts become different kinds of tools. For example, the thought of circulation establishes circulation. The thought of want condenses into the idea of limitation. And the thoughts of freedom produce freedom. If we're not going to take things personally, then this agreement must apply to those thoughts we have about ourselves that are not uplifting. We hear ourselves say, you could have done that better, or perhaps you're not smart enough, or pretty enough, or rich enough to do whatever it is that you think you want to do. If we take that personally, it informs the movie that we're producing of our lives and of ourselves. And we end up producing a movie in which we separate ourselves from the truth that we are indeed individual expressions of the divine. And we're right back where I said we were earlier. The divine would never, ever accept anything other than seeing us as whole, perfect, and complete. God would never share our beliefs of lack or shame or guilt. And in the Science of Mind, Holmes wrote, Nothing is real to us unless we make it real. Nothing can touch us unless we let it touch us. Refuse to have the feelings hurt. Refuse to receive anyone's condemnation. In the independence of your own mentality, believe and feel that you are wonderful. This is not conceit. It is the truth. Listen to that. In the independence of your own mentality, believe and feel that you are wonderful. It's not conceit. It's the truth. If we learn not to take things personally, we can reduce those thoughts of less than or not being good enough in some area and live a happier experience on this planet. When you become immune to the opinions of other people and actions of other people, and of your own self-incriminations, you avoid being the victim of suffering. And like I said earlier, who wants to suffer? When we learn not to take things personally, we eliminate a lot of hurt and suffering because we no longer have a need to defend ourselves or explain who we are. In The Course in Miracles, Lesson 135 tells us, if I defend myself, 
I am attacked. The Course explains that we only defend ourselves when we feel we're being attacked, when we believe that our defense can change things. And that's folly. Defense comes from fear, as does taking things personally. Don Miguel Ruiz says this, Taking nothing personally helps you to break many habits and routines that cause needless suffering. Just by practicing this second agreement, you begin to break dozens of teeny tiny agreements that cause you to suffer. I don't know about you, but I certainly am up for eliminating needless suffering in my life. And of course, it's a journey, not a destination. We all at least occasionally have those feelings of setting the record straight, right? Or perhaps even having our feelings hurt about something that someone said to us. The interesting thing is we often take things personally and we misinterpret what was being said. I remember one morning I showed up at the office and I was talking to one of my coworkers about something that had happened at home. And much to my chagrin, she agreed with my partner. And I said, well, I just don't get it. And the interesting thing is, when she explained how she saw what it was that he said, rather than how I took it, it made a lot of sense. I could have gone the whole day very upset and hurt when it only took me a couple seconds to realize, oh, I took that personally, and it was just meant as a statement to give me information. Ernest Holmes, in this thing called you, reminds us, the greatest gift life could have made to you is yourself. You are a spontaneous, self-choosing center in life. In the great drama of being, the great joy of becoming, the certainty of eternal expansion, you could not ask for more, and more could not have been given. I wonder how often we pause and remember how unique we are. While we're all part of that one life that's God's life and that's our life, we have our own personalities and our own gifts to contribute to that one life. How often do you actually recognize that the greatest gift you have is being you, fully and completely you? Notice any time this week where you start to react to something and see if you can stop yourself. Stop yourself, take a breath, and remember you're a divine expression of God and the other person is talking to God. And if what they have to say is not kind and loving, God's not going to believe it anyway. So why should you? Let's practice. Think of something that you don't particularly like about yourself or something in your life you wish were different. Maybe it's that you'd like to eat healthier or, or lose some more weight or have more money. It doesn't matter. Now stop. Think a different thought. Take a breath. Remember that as a divine expression of God, you are perfect just the way you are right now. That's not to say that we don't want to begin to eat healthier or perhaps lose a little bit of weight. It just means not to be attacking yourself for as you are now. There's a book that's called What You Think of Me is None of My Business. It's a great title and it's a great way to live life, not only with other people, but with how we think of ourselves. Each night, I invite you to review the movie that you made for the day and just notice, did you make yourself the star? What did you do with those supporting characters? And do it without judgment and with an open mind 
to learning where you can be a better producer of your life's movie and perhaps what beliefs about yourself it's time to give up and what things you don't want to take personally. Ask yourself, what kind of practices could you put in place to not take things personally? So in summary, decide this week to take what others say as their truth and not take it personally. And remember, no one is a better you than you are. What people share is their truth, not yours. We come to be who we are on this planet, not who someone else wants us to be. Your greatest gift is being you being who you are. Our thoughts are tools. Use your thoughts to produce freedom and love in your life and eliminate those thoughts of lack or shame or guilt, those things that have you thinking less of yourself than who you really are. Avoid being a victim or suffering. When you defend, you are feeling attacked. Break away from suffering by seeing your truth. Produce your life movie so that you're living in joy in every moment. So here's your affirmation for the week. How is it I so easily and willingly make the choice today to not take anything personally, knowing I am the best person on this planet to be me, and choosing freedom, truth, creativity, joy, ease, and grace in all I do. And your challenge for the week is to notice the agreements you've accepted about yourself and how you believe what others say or do is personal to you. Remember, when you take things personally, somewhere within you, you agree with what is being said. Somewhere within you, you are taking their truth on as your own. And no one knows you better than you do. So let's pray. Just recognizing the presence of spirit that is right here where we are, that love and joy and freedom, that creativity of life, that presence of infinite intelligence, and profound love. The fullness of spirit that lives right in each of us, flowing through me, as me, through you, as you. I know that I'm enough. I know that there's nothing anyone can say or do that can diminish me in any way. And I release everyone else for my opinions about them. I release myself from the opinions of others and from my own opinions that fail to acknowledge the good that I am. I'm free to be happy exactly as I am right now. I'm happy and grateful to know and remember the truth that what is true for me is true for everyone. And I'm grateful for that freedom I release this word of power into the creative law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing it manifests for me right now and for each of us and for the highest good of all concerned. I release it into the heart of God, knowing that God has already said yes, that God knows the truth about me and about each person watching this 
message and that all of this is already done so I can just let it be, let it go, say amen, and we can affirm it together. And so it is. And again, thanks to everyone who is continuing to support us on our journey through this online process. We do plan to be opening again in person towards the end of September either partially in a month or every Sunday, we're still looking at the options. And we need your continued support in order to be able to do that. So thank you very much. Enjoy our offertory song.